NBA. You have some good stuff for us for the NBA, Mano? You have, oh, uh, I mean, look, we just. I, I have, well, here's the thing, too. Yeah. I want to show you real quick because I was watching the other night. Okay. Kyrie Irving is, is playing. Uh, I, pre- I think the best basketball he's he's ever played because um, he has Luca with him, but he also played with LeBron. I get that too. Yeah. But Luca and LeBron, I mean Luca because he's in his prime, and when LeBron was in his prime playing with Kyrie, yeah. there was no what, better one-two combo. I, I think what we're seeing here is Kyrie and a, a sort of LeBron in a way, as Luca's playing just as good and he's in his prime. What do you think? Yeah, I don't know how it ever happened where Kyrie Irving stopped being a one A because the kid's one A talent. It's just he's gotten such a bad rap over the last couple of years, and then he wasn't available for half a season with the obviously the the whole you know vaccine thing. Yes. So he um he kind of got a bad rap. Kyrie Irving's never been a one A. I mean a one B. It's just that happens that he plays with Luka Doncic, the be- arguably the best young player in the league, and LeBron, probably the best one or two player of all time. Kyrie Irving's a killer. Yeah. He's about he's probably the best finishing small guard I've ever seen. He's got big nuts. He's not afraid to shoot the big yeah. shot at the end of the finals. He won a finals, right? This guy's not afraid of anything, and he's he's a guy who could lead a team to a championship on his back, and I n- never thought he wasn't that guy. So to, to they, I don't know when we started talking about him different. Yeah. No, um, can you play the uh, Kyrie Irving um, uh, clip? Was loud. And he's Whoa. doing things in his game that I have never even seen him do, even when he was young. Like, he's getting up and slamming ball. Look, look. Well, this is ridiculous. Then he just tosses oh, this up crazy. in the air. Yeah, that's, this I mean, yeah. that's insane. Yeah, that was insane. He, he distributed there, but he had an alley-oop the game before. Oh, oh, speak of the devil. Here it is. Six-foot, 33-year-old Kyrie Irving. And look at him. He can get up there. He sure can. Yeah. It's crazy handle, not afraid to take the big shot, and a great finisher. Kyrie Irving's a star, man. I, I wish he got the love that he did, but obviously the media has a – they have a campaign to kind of – wish I could diminish his uh, – I you wish I could dunk. dunk. I thought I you wish could dunk. You probably no, can. I can't dunk. I lied. Uh, I lied. <laughs> you, you probably can, Brady. I, I'm good. I can shoot the three. I think if I could dunk, I'd be dead honest with you. If I could dunk, I would just take the girls. I would take a girl to the park and just. you watch this. I would get her a charcuterie plate, and I would just be just begging, gay, gay. Yeah. <laughs> get her a nice Pinot Noir while you're throwing it down. Get her a Pinot Noir down, where right? Papa Bear's just throwing <laughs> down double pumps. And while she's eating the cheese and wine, going, that's my man. Yeah, <laughs> that's my guy. I'm just jumping from the free throw line. She's like, look at him, cow. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'd be great. Uh, Playing tournaments coming up. Chris Mano, break it down for us. All right, so in a nutshell, I mean, it's, it's kind of a – a tricky one, like a lot of people don't understand the format, so I'm going to try to make it easy as I can to kind of explain to people. So in each it conference, kind of confusing. Now, in, yeah, it is definitely. And but in the, it's cool because it gets teams under normal circumstances whose seasons really, in theory, would have been over like a month or two ago. It allows them the ability to kind of play important games down the stretch, which I think is good for the league. So now we have the playoff, the the NBA play in now. The top six on each side are in going forward. So if you're a top six seed in the East or the West, you're good. You're locked into a playoff spot. Seven, eight, nine, and 10, you now play a small bracket to kind of decide who's going to get those seven and eight spots, that's so crazy. which is pretty cool. Philadelphia's seven? I so thought- here's the, that's the crazy part. So let me talk to you a little bit about yeah. how this breaks down, and Please. then we'll talk about the teams in it. So the game ones, each conference is seven hosts. Each conference is eight. The winner earns the seven seed, and with one win, you move on. Hmm. From there, the loser gets another chance to play in what's called game three. Ooh. And that will be against each conference's nines and tens. So the sevens and eights play, the nines and tens play. And then whoever makes it out of those two will at the, ultimately, without you know, going too deep into it, will win the seven and eight seeds in their conference, and that'll round out the playoffs. Hmm. Now, why do we care about the play-in this year? Is because there's so many freaking dangerous teams in this play, and you would expect that it would be a team towards the bottom of the league that you don't really fear. But there's been things this year where, like, Joel Embiid has been out for months, so the Sixers kind of fell off. Yep. And Jimmy Butler kind of turns it on when the playoffs start. He does. So the play Heat have been great. J- playoff Jimmy's nasty. So you have teams in the playoff in the play-in now, like the Warriors and the Sacramento Kings and the Philadelphia 76ers, where under normal circumstances you think these teams might get into the playoffs, but they're going to get rolled in the first round. Now you have teams like these guys who are tried and true in the playoffs, like the Warriors. Who wants to see the Warriors in the first round? And they're a playing team. Yeah. Steph Curry goes off and gets hot for a, a week and a half. You might go home. You know what I mean? Yeah, but so I'm looking at this too, and it's like, after a while, you're like, you, you look at this stuff and you go, mm-hmm. do we really need the Chicago Bulls in the? And listen, I'm a diehard Chicago Bulls fan, but right. I mean, they haven't been good in 12 years. 
I'd be like, what do we need them in here for? They don't have a winning record. And also, I'm sitting here going, is this for the NBA to just get more money? Is that what this is? It's all To to, to drag this on? It's it's obviously for, like, the fans. It it makes the season interesting. Like, Bulls fans are still – they're not done. Like, they would have stopped watching ball a month ago, but they're still tuning in, still probably showing up to the stadium. And, yeah, it's good for the league in that sense. But then you look at a team like the Heat that we just talked about. They went to the finals as a playing team. You know, just a couple of years ago. Yeah. Jimmy Butler gets hot. Bam Adebayo plays well. And Tyler Hero, oh, Tyler Hero was, was hurt at the time. But, yeah, but you could get hot. That's why everybody loves the NCAA tournament so much, though, right? Yeah, Like, you course. see teams that you're like, man, that team really NC shouldn't even State. be here. And yeah. then they make a run. Yeah, oh, NC sure. State was Miami Heat last year. Nobody right. saw Miami Heat going sure. into the finals. Well, also, too, course. I think the exciting thing about the tournament is there's guys that are going to go to college, but there's also guys that are really good talent that you never knew about in college. Like the um, – the two guys for an NC State. Uh, DJs. DJs, yeah. yeah. Uh, I never even heard about those guys, sure. and now I'm a huge fan and, and curious to see where they'll get drafted. Right. And, and then can I just talk real quick about some of the matchups that we already no. have? No. no. Well, <laughs> go ahead. So, this is all you got. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You better talk about it. I got 20 more minutes. All right, so, let's, so we have the Clippers and Dallas already kind of locked into their spots, and Minnesota and Phoenix. So we all like to see stars, and there's just stars everywhere in these matchups. With the Clippers and Dallas, you obviously have Kawhi, PG, and Harden on one side, and you've got the two that you were just talking about, Luka and Kai on the other side. And again, another team that if you're the Clippers, you, you, Dallas is a lower seed, but do you want to see those guys? Because... When you know Luka can have a 55, 15, and 12 game and Kyrie can go off for 35 on you any night, they're a dangerous team to see see early in the playoffs. Right? I think the Clippers are pretty dangerous too, though, when you got Paul George, you got, you know, you got Kawhi, and then you got James Harden. Right. I mean, so those guys, you don't sleep but, on those dudes. I mean, other, they're a little bit long in the tooth, they're a little bit older. That, and it's other than Kawhi Leonard, though. Which one of those guys have ever won anything playoff? Well, when has Kawhi Leonard played more than three games in, well, a, in a regular season? Well, the guy takes here. every other game off because his. Vagina hurts. And, right. and then obviously, <laughs> obviously, then Minnesota Phoenix is interesting, and it it's obviously a team game. But interesting stat: Booker is eleven one in eleven and one in his career against Anthony Edwards. So Minnesota is that is the higher seed by a lot, and they've had the better year clearly. But that's another team. You got Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and Bradley Beal if he's healthy. Do you want to see those guys in the playoffs? Absolutely not. But that's you know what, what Kevin Durant doesn't technically scare me as much as he used to, though. You know. He's just a little bit of an older guy, he's seasoned, but Devin Booker scares the shit out Playoff of me. Playoff Devin Booker, and too. And also, Bradley Beal's no slouch either. Right. So those guys, you know, you need three guys. You need three. And I think Luka, I think that's what they're messing with, the, uh, the Mavericks. They got P.J. Washington, great, but I think they're missing one more piece. And that's always what it is. Like, they're going to they're gonna gear a ton of effort towards stopping one, but then the other can get hot. Or one of them can have a bad shooting night, and the other guy goes off for, like, Luka's a, a three-point threat now. So let's say they make Kyrie, you know, disappear. Luca can go off and kill you, and vice versa. And the same thing goes for the Suns, who have three options. Same thing goes for the Clips, who have three options. Make one or two have a bad night. If the other one goes off and has a crazy night, it's it's all bets are off, you know? Yeah. So it's always interesting with the NBA playoffs. Alicia, did you ever go to the Magic games when you were little? Oh, yeah. What was your favorite p- part of the Magic games? Uh, when they won. <laughs> when they won. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alicia, we're going to school you right him. now. The best player Fire. on the Magic, and he's going to be one of the best players in the league for a long time, Paolo Boncaro. <laughs> Learn that name. Oh, yeah. Boncaro's yeah, awesome. Yeah, he's nasty. Real you question. Like I, got, I got a question for you. What do you think about the 1972 Dolphins? <laughs> They're great. All right. They're Fantastic. Awesome. She was negative 20. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fantastic. Great. Moving on. Uh, man, the Knicks are uh, playoff seeding. You're excited about this because you put it in the dock. Well, I'm pumped because they finished two yesterday. The Knicks have been beat up all year, and they the, what they did was interesting because – they now, it looks to some like they've done something silly. So they played all their players. They played Chicago yesterday, your boys, and they beat them in overtime, right? And it was overtime for that number two seed. Now, by winning that number two seed, the Knicks get the winner of Philly and um, Miami now. Mm -hmm. So the Cleveland Cavaliers were in the mix for that seed too, and they sort of pulled their guys back, almost looking like they wanted to lose so that they dropped back and kind of find themselves in a more favorable seed. But the Knicks did how the Knicks did all year, and they've been like a gritty, tough, we're not afraid of anybody type of team, and they played like that yesterday. Their starters played 40-plus minutes. They got the win, and now they get kind of like, I guess, the privilege of playing the Sixers and the Heat. So that's where we're at now. And uh, you have to – it's all good. And you have to um, – in this league, you have to have a – Star, and I'm telling you, before our eyes, Jalen Brunson is becoming a star. Oh, for sure. I they, mean, yeah, for sure. I love watching Jalen Brunson play. And also, he's been scoring 
not 20 points, not 30 no. points, 50, 60 points. Yeah, and he hasn't done that. He's had an insane year. They've they're at, they're 20 and two. Yeah, they're they're 20 and two <laughs> since OG on the note. 20 and two since they acquired OG Ananobi and he's been playing, which is insane. And Jalen Brunson's averaging over 28 a game. He's got 11 40 point games this year, more than Tatum, Jokic, Jalen Brown, PG, and Kawhi combined. Right. Right. And he's averaging 38 plus over his last seven. So he's easy to look over again because he's about 5'11 or 6 foot on his best day and he's not a super athlete. But if you watch him day in and day out, he's insane. So they, they have a true star that they could fall upon and try to win. And I'm looking to see what they do. I'm, I'm interested to see what kind of run they can put on. Um, yeah. I, I, sorry. I'm, I'm so, my brain's going everywhere. Um, the Grayson Allen thing is interesting yeah. to me. I, I've th this kid was almost out of the league, and now he just Couple got. Times. And then he just got. He just got paid. Mm -hmm. Paid, paid, paid. Yeah. Just a yeah. A little note came out this morning. He's got four years, seventy million dollar extension with the Suns. And he, um, yeah, a guy who's kind of been a journeyman in and out of the league. He's more known for, like, tripping dudes and doing dirty stuff than he is really as his basketball stuff. But he's kind of found a home where he's at in Phoenix now. He led the league in three-point percentage this year. And it's kind of been because, so we talk about it, so much of the focus has been on these big three that you leave a guy like Grayson Allen in the corner to kind of bury threes, and he's been able to do it all year. And so we'll see how far they can go. That's kind of a measure in the playoffs. It's about... It's not about really what, what the stars – the stars will do, be the stars no matter what. It's about what you're going to get from the guys who are your role guys who tend to kind of like not, not do the same things in the playoffs as they've been able to do in the regular season. But Grayson Allen's coming in off an awesome regular season, and he just got paid. So yeah. you've got to think he's going to come in hungry and with like a nice weight off his shoulders. Sometimes when these guys get paid, they drift off. You know what I mean? Yeah, but for sure. What are these guys talking about? What are you guys talking about? Nothing. Tell the class. You having fun? Tell the class. I'm having so much fun here. Alejandro over there is having his own podcast. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. No, um, He's knocking out everyone in the back. Boban. Boban. Oh, yeah. This guy, dude. Does he stop growing ever? This guy looks like he just gets taller and taller every time I see his ass. Yeah, so the Boban thing is pretty funny. I just put it on there. It's like a little interesting thing. I think you guys might like it. So the Cleveland, I mean, uh, the LA Clippers do a thing where if an opposing player, if an opposing player misses two free throws, the whole crowd gets free chicken. So yeah. Boban's played in LA before and he knew that. So Not he racist, missed the first that. one and he acknowledges the crowd now. And watch, he goes on and he misses the second on purpose. Why does he look like the To bag? get the crowd free chicken, which is pretty awesome. Good for he Boban. Look, he looks like. So he points to the crowd and he shoots it off left. Not even close. And he gets the crowd chicken. <laughs> That's what you call a team player. Man of the people, Boban Marjanovic. I'm not going to lie. He looks like I'd see somebody in my nightmares. Like, no, that dude's uh, no, a creepy bastard. I was bastard. just about to say, he looks like a bad guy in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah, no, he's a creepy bastard for sure. Oh, no. Yeah, he's seven he's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. No, he's a nice guy, but he's just creepy. Some of the best State Farm commercials is yeah. with Boban. Yeah. He's got this he's really bad. funny Very thing. True. He, he played in Philly and L.A. with uh, Tobias Harris. And they have like a podcast of their own called Toby and Boby. They were like best friends. And it's pretty funny to see him act completely different than you'd imagine a seven foot five guy would.